In this video, we're going to take a look at how to create rectangles and different types of polygonal shapes inside of Autodesk Inventor. So here inside of a new two-dimensional sketch and a part file, I am on the XY plane, and I'm going to go up to our Create panel and take a look at this rectangle flyout. Inside this flyout, you can see there is a two-point rectangle, a three-point rectangle, two-point center-based rectangle, a three-point center-based rectangle, and also at the very bottom of this flyout is a polygon. Let's begin by looking at the two-point rectangle. The first thing you need to do is specify a corner point for this rectangle. So I could choose my origin point here to begin my rectangle, or I could choose somewhere up in one of my quadrants and then create the rectangle going around my origin. And it depends on which place you put your cursor for how it's going to generate the direction of this rectangle. I'll choose here. And now you can see I have a rectangle created. I know it's a rectangle because it has some geometric rules that automatically appear for me, such as parallel and perpendicular. And one of the legs is also a horizontal leg, so it stays in this orientation. Next up, let's take a look at the three-point rectangle. This allows me to specify a rectangle by choosing three points. Next is our two-point center rectangle. This allows me to specify my rectangle based on a center point first, and then it grows around the center point symmetrically in an automatic fashion. Now you're also noticing on each and every one of these rectangles, I can specify some values to put in here. I'm not going to do that right now, just kind of getting used to the way I'm creating the generic rectangle shape. So I'll go ahead and place that. Something that's different about this one, as you can see, it has these kind of dotted yellowish lines in here. These are known as construction lines, and these are what help create that rectangle so that it is a center point rectangle. Next up, we'll do a three point center rectangle, which operates very similar to the one we have over here, but it works in the center first instead. We'll right click and choose OK. Next up, we have our polygon. When I choose that, this is the first command we've seen that actually gives us a little miniature dialog box. Now, to begin with here, I'm just going to choose five sided polygon click somewhere on the screen, and then it generates a polygon. It creates these little constraints around here that let me know that that is patterned. You right click and choose OK. Notice how polygon became the default icon up here at the top of the screen because I used that command last. Here I'll choose polygon again. And we have an option of inscribed or circumscribed. If you're just creating a polygon from scratch, you really don't need to worry about either of these options. However, if you're trying to fit this inside of something else, like a circle, then the inscribed polygon or circumscribed polygon options matter. So let me restart the tool now that I have a circle in there. Here I will do a inscribed circle and I will do eight sides. Here I'll pick the center of that circle. And then when I go to connect it to the outside, you can see it stays inscribed of the circle. If I click on circumscribed, you can see it tries to go to the outside of that circle. If you already have a predefined piece of geometry, it does matter which one you select. Here, I'll choose done. None of these shapes have been properly defined around the origin. They're just kind of showing you how the tool is utilized, but we really need to put dimensions on here. We need to make some sense out of this. We'll be doing that at a later time, but for now, this is just how the rectangle and polygon commands work.